Hi and welcome to today's lesson. In this first tutorial we will be able to add and subtract matrices and we will be able to use scalar multiplication. Basics of matrices. Matrices is the plural of the word matrix. So this is the plural and this is the singular. A matrix is simply an arrangement of elements. Usually these might be numbers, and they can be some variables as well. The first thing we're going to look at is how to name a matrix. A matrix is named with a capital letter and its dimensions. So if we're looking at this first example here, I might just pick the capital letter A. You could pick any one of the 26. Um, now we need to know how many rows it has and how many columns it has. So rows are what you're usually sitting in in a movie theater. Rows go side by side. So there are two rows here. So we'll say two by, and then number of columns. Columns hold up buildings like the White House and this building. So columns one, two, three, those go vertically. So we would call this uh, whatever capital letter you wish, and then it's a two by three matrix. So that's how we name a matrix with a capital letter and its dimensions. We have some special matrices that I'd like to point out to you. A column matrix is simply a single column. So I'll just put in some elements here, maybe one, three, five, seven, a couple odd numbers. If we wanted to name this matrix, perhaps I use the letter W this time, we need to know how many rows it has, which it has one, two, three, four rows. And of course, since it's a column matrix, it just has the one single column. So that would be a four by one matrix. Conversely, a row matrix is simply a single row. Maybe I'll put in some elements like this. And maybe you want to use your first initial. That would be fine. I'll use capital J. We need to know the rows and columns. It has a single row. That's why it's called a row matrix. And in this case, it has one, two, three little columns. So we could call this a one by three. A square matrix has to have the same number of rows and columns. That's why it's going to look like a square. So I'll just go ahead and do two, four, six, eight. And that's a simple square matrix. In this case, if I were to name this, maybe I'll call it S for square. This is a two by two. And again, for it to be a square, the number of rows and the number of columns would have to be the same. The identity matrix, or more importantly, the multiplicative identity matrix. Let me give you the example of the three by three multiplicative identity matrix. A multiplicative identity matrix has ones along what's called the principal diagonal. So ones all along this first diagonal. And there are zeros in all the other locations. So zeros everywhere else. This is an example of the three by three matrix. This type of matrix actually will always reserve the capital letter I. So please do not use the capital letter I for any other matrix unless it's the multiplicative identity matrix. In this case, it's a three by three because there are three rows and three columns. Some books or some teachers might also just call an identity matrix uh, like the three by three I three. So you might see something like that. Usually I'll use the three by three, but sometimes I might use that. Again, capital I is reserved only for the multiplicative identity. And if you've noticed, an identity matrix will always have to be a square matrix as well. Moving on to addition and subtraction, some basic operations with matrices. There's really only two things you have to, you have to pay attention to. Firstly, if you're going to add two matrices or subtract two matrices, they must have the same dimensions. They must have the same dimensions. If they do not have the same dimensions, then you are not able to perform the operation for addition or subtraction. Um, and if they do have the same dimensions, then you simply add or subtract, depending on the symbol in between them, add or subtract corresponding elements, basically the elements that are in the same spots. 
in the same locations. So if I'm looking at this first example here, I'm trying to add this matrix to this matrix. The first thing I want to check is to make sure that they have the same dimensions, and they do. This is a 3 by 1. This is also a 3 by 1. So that means that I can do it. And if I add them together, and I know I'm adding because there's a plus sign in the middle, I'm going to take the corresponding pieces, for example, the top elements, and I'm going to add them together to get a negative 9. And then the elements that are in the middle, the 3 and the 2, I'll add them together to get a 5. And then lastly, the elements that are on the bottom, the 2 and the negative 5, will add to give a negative 3. It's pretty simple. They have to have the same dimensions, and then you simply combine the pieces that are in the like locations. If you're looking at the second example, just beware of a subtraction. What I actually like to do is change my subtractions to addition. And if I change that to an addition problem, then all of the elements in the second matrix would actually become the opposites. Because subtraction is simply addition of the opposites. So this is a negative 2, this is a positive 3, this is a negative 4, this is a positive 1. I think my brain sees addition a whole lot easier maybe yours too. If you like the original problem, you can go straight to the answer. Fantastic. I'm going to change it to addition, and I'm going to do it from there because I like addition. So the, the elements in the top left, the 1 and the negative 2, will add to give negative 1. The numbers in the top right, the 2 and the 3, will combine to make 5. The numbers in the bottom left, the 3 and the negative 4 will combine to make negative 1. And finally, the, uh, bot the bottom right elements, the 4 and the 1, will combine to make a 5. Looking at this third example in this section, I'm trying to add a 2 by 1 to a 1 by 2. Clearly they do not look like each other, they are not the same dimensions, so this cannot be done. The directions most likely will tell you to write not possible and explain why it is not possible. So I might say not possible and then incorrect dimensions. That seems like an easy way to explain my, my not possible. Scalar multiplication. A scalar is sort of like, I like to think of it as a coefficient of your matrix. The coefficient of the matrix. It's a number that's going to be multiplied to all the elements in your matrix. You must do scalar multiplication before you do addition and subtraction. Scalar multiplication. comes first. So you need to multiply that in first before you can go back up here and do what we just learned with addition and subtraction. So let's first let's look at this first example. We have two scalars. We have a 2 and we have a 3. We need to multiply this 2 into this first matrix. So basically that's going to change um, the elements to become double. So negative 6 and 2 and then we need to multiply this 3 into the second one, so those are basically going to triple to make 12 and negative 3. Pretty simple. It's like a coefficient. You're just multiplying, sort of like distributing it into the elements of the matrix. And then we have a simple addition problem that we could do, uh, like the, the stuff up on the top of this page. Combine the negative 6 with the 12 and make 6. Combine the 2 with the negative 3 to make negative 1, and we're finished. This last example, I have, I see two scalars still. I see this one third, obviously, here it is, but I also see a negative one right here. And like I did up here, changing this to a subtraction, from a subtraction to an addition, I'm going to do the same thing down here. Okay? Please don't try to just do everything all at once because you might miss one thing and then your answer will not be complete. So just show some middle steps. Not a problem with that. One third times 12, one third of 12, 4. One third times negative 6 is negative 2. And one third times 0, well, that's still just 0. 
Again, I'm going to change this or think of this as a negative one so that when I multiply it in, I get to use my plus sign. So subtraction, uh, negative 1 times 2 becomes negative 2, negative 1 times negative 5 becomes 5, negative 1 times 7 becomes negative 7, and then we're able to do this. Perhaps I introduce an equal sign since I'm running out of room down at the bottom, and I'll combine these terms, 4 and negative 2 make 2, negative 2 and 5 make 3, 0 and negative 7 make negative 7. And we end with a column matrix like that. The next bit of notes, I have two try problems. I have try one and try two. If you would please pause the video at this point and try these uh, two problems, that would be great. Please um, pause right now and try these. So here are the three answers that you should have gotten. Now, I happen to pick capital A and capital B. You may have chosen a any one of the other uh, capital letters, as long as you did not use an I, because neither of these matrices is the identity matrix. It doesn't really matter which of the capital letters you chose, but you must have a capital letter when you're naming a matrix. Uh, the dimensions of so the first one are 1 by 4, and the second one are 3 by 2. Now, you might have shown some middle work, of course, here. I just went straight to our final answer, and you should have gotten this 3x2 matrix here. Thanks for playing.